Hi there, I'm Kira and you're watching Polymer Clay TV. Let's play with shape inspiration today. So I've rolled out some Sculpey Souffle in the new color called Koi. Love it, it's a nice um, golden orangey color. And I've got these bird cutters that I hand drew a couple days ago because I was playing with digital art, I made this really funky bird, and then I decided it had to be made in clay. So here it is as a cutter, and it's too small for my idea, so I'm gonna put it here and get my X-Acto blade. And I'm going to make an echo of this in a larger size. This is what you can do if you have a cutter that you like, but maybe it's not the right size for the art that you intend to create. So I'm still gonna have this fun bird shape, it's just gonna be bigger. So I'm going to leave that over here as my inspiration as I refine the edges on this shape. So I want them to have a little bit more of a beak, so I'll cut a little bit out of this chest area. And I want his tail to be a little thinner, don't need it to be so wide. There, that's cool. I like it. It's pretty close to my original shape just by kind of expanding it and making it bigger. Now, I am going to start this whole process of decorating the bird by giving it some texture. So I'm gonna take my green sponge here and I'm gonna gently roll over the bird. Super cool. Just starting off by having texture instead of that flatness. So here I have a whole bunch of stuff. I have some scraps. I have taken the um, koi color and mixed it with some white to get a different tint of that color. I have some yellow. Uh, I think this is Primo. I'm not sure which color that is. Some of the original color because we're going to use that. And a bunch of scrappy things. This is some um, Primo turquoise granite. This is Primo in white and a bunch of scraps. Okay, I just keep scraps like this on my desk so I can grab them to use for projects like this. Here's where I'm headed to a bird that kind of looks like this with a lot of little details. And I'm going to pull out my texture tip because my sparkle and spiral stamps have some of these pretty little sort of flowery looking things that I can use to press some details. I'm just going to grab a piece of this lighter color, make a circle, and put it right here. And then I'm going to take this stamp, quickly stamping, you can just kind of use it like that. So there's the beginning of the eye, and I want to give him a blue eyeball. So I'm just going to take a piece of this color. And press it flat and stick it in the middle. So in this section, I'm speeding it up because it's kind of boring to watch me go slowly, but I'm just making some thin snakes to outline the areas of the wings. And I decided right there to make a little spiral because that's one of my signature sculpting pieces. And I want you to remember that tools are a really great way to get in the small spaces. And I'm using a combination of my stamps and some silicone um, tips and some ball stylus tools to get into the small spaces and help me work. 
have fun. This is supposed to be fun, right? So one thing I want to show you and kind of explain here is that when you're working small scale, it takes so little clay. This snake I'm rolling here is very thin because inside of the wings here, you know, even this yellow piece is too thick. So I'm just gonna pull it up and make it about half that size just to show you what I'm talking about. Because I was rushing, because I, like I said, I don't want to take too, too long. I made it too thick. So I want it to be much thinner than that. Because that, the paying attention to these small details of not making things huge is what makes your piece look really refined. If you want it to look refined, you don't necessarily have to have it be refined, but see, so that's a little bit thinner. And then I will use a tool to help me lay it where I want it. And then I wanted a couple of these pieces in there as well. Even thinner. And sculpting tools like this will really help you get into places where your fingers couldn't possibly go. Unless you're some sort of sculpting ninja with tiny fingers and a lot of delicacy, which that would be very cool, but I'm not. <laughs> All right, so just more little circles and dabs of clay. In fact, you can even take really tiny little pieces and kind of roll them. Grab your dotting tool and stick them places just by picking them up with that little tool. I want to show you a couple of quick and easy ways to create a very textural and sculptural and detailed, whimsical and intricate look. It's really easy. Okay, so I've got some very specific tools that I'm going to show you real quick how to use. These are Sculpey Etch and Pearls, and they're kind of like a knitting needle on one end and this really fun cup and circle shape on the other. So the way these work is you can either fill the cup with a dome of clay or you can use them as tiny circle cutouts. So you can take a thin sheet of clay and if I press this on my finger here, it's just going to pop out a circle. And I can then take that circle, lay it down somewhere on my design, And then I can take the other two smaller ones to make like little circular impressions. And that's what I've done in a lot of those spots, little circular impressions on it. And then if I wanted to say, spread out some of the edge of that, I take the other end, which is more like a needle tool and just drag it. So that was really easy. And now I have this fun little circle impression. Okay, the other thing that I am doing is taking this type of tool 
These are silicone tools on one end, which are flexible and make it easy to get into tight spaces. And then on the other end, they have ball styluses. Ooh, I almost said ball, like my old New York accent. Ball styluses here. And these are used for a couple of things. So here, I'll take this one and show you that I can take this piece of clay and just use it to kind of scrape off a little piece, a tiny little piece. Roll it into a ball and I can use the ball stylus to then pick it up and place it where I want it. It's, it's great for little detailed work. So I'm gonna do the same thing because I want to have one of these brighter colored circles on the back tail end here. And I'm gonna use this to help me scoop it up off my finger. My clay is soft, it's warm here. So all of those things contribute to wanting to use tools to do some of this work. So I'm gonna put this guy here. I'm gonna turn it around and use the ball end and spread it out a little bit. Make some marks. Grab the other etch and pearl that is a little bit smaller and make a circular mark on it. And then grab the tinier one and make that other circle. And you can play with this. You don't have to just make one circle. You could make it look like a rose very easily by moving around. See what I did? I made it like a little flower just by stamping it several times instead of once. So these are just some fun and easy sculptural techniques to make something look really complex in a short amount of time. And here, I'll do it one more time with this guy because I wanna put some little pieces back here. See, I'm just using it to scrape off a little piece, then rolling a tiny little ball and back here, I think I wanna put these around this guy. So let me zoom out just a little. Right, so just using this to kind of create a tiny, teeny little scrappy piece of that clay that you can barely see and use my tool to just touch it and then stick it where I want it. So tools like this really help for creating these intricate little whimsical ideas. When you look at it and say, oh my goodness, I could never do that. Of course you could. You just need the right tools and a little bit of time. And remember that when you're making something that looks intricate like this, less clay is better. A lot of times we use too much clay and it just looks clunky and not very, um, you know, not very intricate, but when you use tiny bits of clay, then you can really give it that look of being, of like, oh, this took a long time to make and look how detailed it is, but it's really not, it doesn't take that long once you get your idea formed and start going for it. See, I'm making this little flower thing down here by his tail and it's not taking too long because I have the right tools. Sometimes I just have to realize my finger is not the right tool. It's not gonna do what I want it to do because it's too big. One more flower petal, tiny little petal. The same thing holds true for when you're making snakes. So like this snake right here is way too thick for a project like this. So I would have to really thin it out. Don't be afraid to make it super thin and don't be afraid to use, again, a tool to help you place it. So I'm gonna put this one on the side of his tail here.
and probably I need to cut off just a little more because I made it too long. If you watch miniaturists, you'll see that they do a lot of work with their pointy tipped exacto blade like I'm doing here. It's not just for cutting, it could be for placing, for pressing. And then I want to outline the bottom part of his tail the same way. So just thin this out, make it super thin. And come over here and lay it over here. And then where it comes up against the bottom of his belly, just cut that off. Use my tool to refine the edge there. And just have fun. Here's another color mixing and palette making tip for you. So I decided I wanted some of this koi orange to be even more vib vibrantly orange. And I took a piece of pomegranate clay and I mixed it, I haven't finished yet, but I'm mixing it into a chunk of the koi. And what this does, see I've got the base color, I've got the color mixed with white, and I've got now the color mixed with pomegranate. And this makes a palette that's very harmonious and all the colors go together because their base is all the same. So that's how you can easily make a palette. And I think I may even take some of this yellow and do the same thing. So if we take some yellow and mix it into the koi, I'll show you what that looks like too. So now we've got a lot of great color harmony happening. This yellow has been toned down a bit and these colors match with the original base color really nicely. Have so much fun. So if you enjoyed this little demonstration of how to use tools and some ideas for how to make a design look intricate real quick, make sure you like and follow Make sure you thumbs up on this video, hit the subscribe button so that you never miss a video, and come on over to polymerclaytv.com and you'll find lots and lots of more tutorials and product demos for you to try. Have fun with your polymer clay creations!